Hi, I'm Janet Raftis, Master Healer and Intuitive Development Teacher. And I am here tonight with a special guest, my partner. I'm Scott Hall, a psychic and channel. <laughs> and um, so Scott and I were talking last week after my Facebook Live on channeled writing about the idea of protection. And I've done a Facebook Live on this before. Um, and that was, I think, um, why protection may not be protective. And, um, but we wanted to approach it again and from a little bit of a different angle this week um, because it's such an important topic and because it really, um, it connects to a lot of work in the metaphysical. So something that I have really gotten away from over the years is even using the word protection or <laughs> buying into the idea of protection for myself. And the reason that is, is because I noticed um, during my uh, reawakening and the early years of my healing journey and career that when I felt like I needed protection, um, I was indeed actually attracting more to protect myself from. Like I was in, agree in an agreement with these, um, you know, different, these lower vibrational energies and I was getting more attachments and I was more exhausted and all these things were happening to me because I felt like I needed to be protected from something. Now, during that time, I was still very much um, operating from a lot of my wounds. I wasn't as healed as I am today and I um, was definitely more in a victim mentality. And so that need for like protection was actually putting me in, a, in agreement to continue in this sort of state of being a victim. Yeah, it's like a handshake. You're, mm -hmm. you're actually shaking hands saying, I agree to give you my power, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. negative or whatever evil thing, whatever. Um, I agree to give you my power and the thing says, thank you, awesome. <laughs> let's, let's start screwing with you right now, yeah, right? <laughs> totally. So um, I, I noticed that for myself and then I really started noticing it too with people that I was working with and then I really noticed it when I was um, starting to work with house clearings and um, energies of spaces and so forth and so on. What I've really realized um, from my journey and Scott's journey is a little bit different so we've noticed this in two different places yeah. which is great um, but I've noticed that I don't like I have sovereignty over my energy and my body and my space and this is a really really important concept when we're dealing with the metaphysical um, just like um, we wouldn't let a stranger just walk into our house we don't need to let um, an, any metaphysical entity walk into our house or into our space or onto our body or whatever that might be we have the ability and the right to say get out get away from me you're not welcome here we have that power and um, using that power and, and really trusting ourselves and having that faith in ourselves sets us up to determine exactly what we want our physical space to be like mm -hmm. yeah I, I was I got it lucky I'm not mm -hmm. sure why mm -hmm. some something about my upbringing or maybe being mm -hmm. a creative person my mind was always open to the potential of meeting new things right. i never thought to be afraid <laughs> and so that helps as i was kind of naive and then realized what i was doing is i wasn't attracting because i didn't even think about it mm -hmm. and then once i understood what was going on and we started doing house clearings i was able to handle a demoness type entity and uh, i can't say he didn't he didn't startle me, but <laughs> I knew he couldn't touch me because I said he couldn't touch me. And if I had, mm -hmm. you know, said, oh my God, you know, once you get scared, you know, like, like bad things start happening. <laughs> People start dying in movies and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's really comes down to this idea of agreement that Scott and I touched on a little bit earlier. And that is that. It's a, it's, a, it's a vibration, right? So everything is vibrational in the universe. Everything, everything that exists has a vibration. And um, Monique, the green guy. Yes, the green guy. <laughs> yes, I wanted to say hi to everyone while you're talking, yes. but I didn't want to cut you off. I'm like, oh, there she is. <laughs> um, everything is vibration, and vibration, like vibration, finds its like match, right? So one vibration here will find what matches it. So if you have, um, if you are emitting a, a denser vibration such as fear um, and, and fear has its place in the world so I'm not saying you know you're never going to be fearless but when you go into a metaphysical situation like this and you're 
holding this vibration of fear, you are, your vibration is out looking for a matching vibration. And the vibration that's going to match it is the one right. that will the provide you. The one you don't want. <laughs> right. The one that will provide you with the thing to be afraid it's of. It's like dating when you haven't figured it out yet, right? Yes. The, the, you keep attracting the same the dude. same thing, exactly. It's very much like dating. So what vibration do you want to date, right? You had so it you right. Could... We didn't, I didn't think we'd have dating advice here. It's working though. That's right. Yeah. So yes. when you and so when you raise your vibration, then that is you know a very multifaceted journey, and it can involve for everybody. It will be different. You know, for me, it involved a lot of personal healing, energy healing, emotional healing, empowerment work, so forth and so on. But for some people, like Scott, that was something he was able to just get. Like he was able to stand in that. So. I think mostly it's to sort of take a, take a little bit of time to reflect and ask yourself like, well, what do I feel like is going on? You know, when I am um, doing metaphysical work, if I'm thinking about channeling or, you know, going into a house where there might be an earthbound spirit, like what is my, what is, what, what am I feeling about it? How am I feeling about it? Well, where the, where is my are, vibrational set point? And those are the, we, like we discussed before the, before we did this is that, those are the, the certain things, uh, certain activities that tend to bring up fear in people that don't normally maybe experience fear mm -hmm. with metaphysical, like you may be fine doing readings or whatever, but when you go into a house that's supposedly haunted, mm -hmm. then all of a sudden the fear comes up or you've never done channeling because you've heard bad things can come, you know, entities mm -hmm. can come and take you over if you're channeling or um, I, I do astral projection as well as in a dream, uh, in the astral realm, in the dream realm, something can come get you. It's, but it, the, the same holds true no matter what realm you're in, is the vibration you put out, is the vibration you get back. And the perfect wall, like a wall doesn't really work so much, like if you want a wall against Mexico because you think you're gonna get hurt, that, that's, that's just ridiculous, we all know that's ridiculous. But if you have, a, you don't even need a wall with vibration because the two vibrations will come and hit and create they, they just can't match they can't you cannot possibly get an evil thing to touch you when you're pure love right exactly so this is Did I describe that well or no <laughs> well, I, was a little, I was maybe a little bit lost for a moment. So. Okay. It's my first um, time. Yes. I know this is his first Facebook Live I'm ever. usually behind the scenes. Yes. So if you have a really high vibration and you connect with something that has a lower vibration, they will repel one another, right? So if, um, if you are in a high vibra vibratory state and you go into a place where there's a lower density vibration and you maintain your higher vibration and you use the empowerment of your higher vibration to affect and move the energy of the lower vibration the higher vibration will will win out it will be the one who it will be the vibration that stays but if you meet the higher if you meet a low vibration if you go into a place and you feel something that scares you and then you go oh my god there's something really scary here I'm going to be hurt then what will happen is your vibration will uh, lower itself to meet the other vibration. And that's when you end up with an attachment or something like that. An attachment cannot occur without an agreement. There has to be an agreement on some level in order for an attachment to occur. Right. Right. Yes. And what, but the one thing too, like when we go into a house clearing, if there's something that doesn't feel good, it still doesn't feel good. It doesn't matter how high vibration we are. Wow, that was a great lunch we just had. Let's go clear this house. And then, oh, I mean, it still feels bad, right. but, it, but we're not afraid of it. That's the difference. And so you still get to choose what kind of vibes you want to be around, you know, just like people that are rude or whatever, you don't want to be around them. Some people don't want to be around negative entities. Um, and we are okay with it up to a certain extent, you know, we don't, not, not too negative or whatever, right. um, or too dark. But um, but it still feels bad. We're very empathic. We're there. Uh, we're there to feel things. We're there to find out what's going on with the house. But um, we just know it can't hurt us, and that helps. And then we get out of there. And honestly, it is like yuck, yuck, yuck. Let's get that off us. So it's, it's not like you're just if you have high vibes that you don't even feel uh, negativity. You feel it, but you just choose whether you want to deal with it or not. Right. So that's and so here here come here we come to the point. Um, well, let's look at um, Monique's question real quick. You do this by holding the intention of staying high vibe, correct? Can you feel fear and stay high vibe? Is it, yes, you can feel fear and then still stay in that state. So like Scott was saying, like we can, but the thing is when you get the, when you notice the thing, right? When you're like, oh my God, there's something really intense here. 
you might have that moment of fear, right? There's a moment of like recognition of like, this thing is gnarly, Or right? your hair stands up on your the back of your neck, that really happens. Mm -hmm. So what you wanna do in that moment is that you're gonna take control of the situation. You have this knowingness that you are the one that has the power in the situation. Um, so what you will do in is no, so like when we came the green, the green guy, right? Like we both experienced the green demon-esque um, energy and um, love you too, Gabby. We both experienced it in two different ways and we both absolutely knew that that thing had no power over us. Now it was a, a bitch to get rid of it. I mean, yeah. it was It like was a, thick, like it would have become, it would have, it would have been able to move physical things. We both felt that so strongly that if it had gotten a little stronger, in other words, it was getting stronger from fear. Right. And if it had gotten a little stronger, gotten fed more, it would do mm -hmm. some some things. Probably still can't. I don't know about that. It could if it threw something, could it hit us if we were high vibration? I wonder. Um, nothing could have impacted us because well, I'm gonna speak for myself it. because I have always <laughs> a force field of light around me. So now I know that it's not, and it's not protection. I don't perceive it as having a shield or armor or anything like that. I have a force field of light around me that only high vibrational energies can. Um, pass through, right? So when I saw that or when I see anything like that, I know it cannot, I know, I absolutely yeah, know and hold mm -hmm. that complete faith that it cannot negatively impact me. It cannot harm me. And there's my power, right? Is that I'm like, you cannot mess with me. I, I am here to get rid of you and I will get rid of you. That goes for any energy, whether it is a clump of dense energy in your house because somebody came to visit who was depressed, all the way through to you know something really kind of gnarly. What would you say to someone who's thinking about doing one of these things, trying to do astral projection, trying to do mm -hmm. channeling, uh, wanting to do house clearing, but they have a fear of this, what would you suggest to them beforehand? So I would suggest that as long as you are holding the fear if the fear feels to you in any way like you could attract something that would create harm for you, then I would advise that you do not do it until you get right with yourself. So going into it with that absolute knowledge of like, I have absolute faith in myself and my team that I, I've got this and nothing can mess with me. And when you really feel that, then that is when, you know, that's when you can do it. So if you're gonna do some channeled writing, this would be like, I'm gonna do some channeled writing. I've got my force field of light around me. Only high vibrational energies can come in. I'm not even thinking about other stuff. Um, and if there's any sort of concern at all, then maybe you work with one specific energy, like I'm gonna work with Archangel Michael because I feel really comfortable with his energy and I'm gonna hold this space of absolute faith that nothing can come in without my permission, right? Everything's in agreement. What are you in agreement with? ultimately is what it comes down to. Cool. So that's for you to examine right there. Are we gonna get some questions? Let's then? get some questions, yes. <laughs> Any other questions from you guys? Hi Tracy, hi Gabrielle. All that's right, Monique and Ing had a question. I don't know if I can scroll on this. Oh, I you think, can. okay, I think it is the other way around. You attract the same level of vibration you are on, so you will not encounter negative if you are positive, only when you are on. Yes, exactly. Same, that's what same we were thing. Saying. Law of attraction. Yeah. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's what we were. I hope that's what Hopefully came across. Hopefully, we were as we explaining were it. <laughs> yeah, like vibration <laughs> attracts like vibration. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, does anybody else have a question? <laughs> Hi Tracy. <laughs> oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> she, Janet's on a on a higher chair than me, so it will look like we're almost the same height. No, I got the big girl seat today. <laughs> <laughs> She's on those uh, telephone books. <laughs> so um, we're gonna wait. I mean, we're gonna give you guys a few minutes if you have any other questions formulating. Um, I do want to share that I have a couple of retreats coming up. There's one at the end of April, and it's an in, oh, I love you too, Sophia. Um, there's one at the end of April and the one at the end of the May. Um, April is an introduction to energy exploration and intuitive development retreat, and then the level two retreat, the advanced retreat, is at the end of May. And they're and called? <laughs> energy Explorers. Yes. And, um, and I'll be there. And Scott will be there, and Scott will be sharing his gifts. I'm going to channel. Channel too. and a musician. Safely. <laughs> he channels, no demons. Yeah, he channels be cool. a loving entity, um, an extraterrestrial entity um, known as Ave. 
um, who shares really beautiful, loving messages. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Um, any right. questions any before questions? we go? All right, we're happy to answer them. And otherwise, um, if you think of a question later, feel free to come back and put it in the comments, and um, I will be checking that. And um, this was fun. It was, it was fun. good. I know it was our first time. I like doing it in front of together. the cameras. It's, it's cool. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. And, Bye, um, Susan. <laughs> hey, Susan. <laughs> and we'll see you all soon. Bye. Bye.